Hey guys, what's up? It's Born of Beller welcoming you back to day 21 of our Pokemon TCG Pocket Journey. Going to start off with another card today, and so I've got for you here this Lapras EX. Uh, it is a full art kind of, not shiny, but the, the stellar sparkle version. It's got all that rainbow board and whatnot. This is a card I specifically opened this past weekend. Uh, a lot of times me and my bros just like to try and hang out as frequently as we can on the weekend and on the off chance that we're all feeling like we have a bit of money to spend, we'll end up going out and grabbing some Pokemon cards. That happened to be my biggest hit of the day. And I mean, I think it's a really excellently looking card. I love the rainbow border. The card itself, I would love to see how you could get it to work, but uh, that energy cost is just a little too steep and a little too weird. But in any case, Hopefully you guys did enjoy that. Of course, I will have it here somewhere on the side just to show y'all kind of a better glimpse at it. But besides that, we are going to get into our packs for the day. Going to try the Mewtwo pack here. And I think after that, um, I think I opened a Charizard one yesterday. Oh, this one was backwards. Hold on. We had them for me. Pinsir, that's actually pretty good. Octopus. Dynamo, Kingler, another good one, and Boo. Nothing fantastic, but I would also say that, again, just getting some new cards is better than just getting all dupes. Got our kind of next milestone, I believe that was 130. Let me search through here and see if there was anything I was actually looking for. I think actually I did want to open this Charizard pack here. Mainly because I just need more Execute or Exeggutor, one of those two, really. I'll try this one. Slowpoke, okay, it was a good choice that I chose that one. Pinsir, Full Art. Not like the biggest fan of Pinsir, if you're gonna ask me like of the kind of like big bugs that I like. Uh, Heracross is definitely the, the one to go for, but Pinsir's pretty okay. Doduo, and I'm seeing something on the edge there. That looks like another rare of some kind. Wow, holy cow. That wasn't a god pack. But even then, two of the full art like rares in one pack, that is definitely, I have to imagine is super uncommon. Almost just makes up for the fact that like, you know, our last pack, we got some new cards, but pretty much one per pack there. That is crazy. Okay. No complaints there. Go ahead and look at the shop. Get our easy daily. Go to the wonder pick. So we do have three here if we want to get a rare, which I am seeing that Alakazam, which I have been chasing for so long. Ooh, they got the Rapidash there too. Rapidash is so, such a pretty card. We have a guard of war, but I don't really want slash need anything else there. Such a cool Dragonite, yeah. I think most of the full arts are, that they have here are like just complete hits. Like this Dragonite just looks so amazing. And it doesn't actually look like there's anything we'd want to rewind for. Yeah, give me just one second. Yeah, I don't think I've learned my lesson, and this is actually from a person on our friends list, Black. Let's see if we can manage a, uh, a good pick from him. Or them. I guess I don't, <laughs> don't want to assume anything, but... Top middle? Oh boy, probably the worst card we could have possibly seen. Oof. Man. Well, give him a thanks anyways. It was worth the try. Back up here. Go ahead and get our missions out of the way since we've gotten those complete. Find that. And we can go over to battle now. So again, it's really just these advanced ones here that we're still kind of missing out on some. Uh, let me see if I don't think we've done the Nitto King or Nitto Queen yesterday. Let me see if I can uh, put some fighting fools in here and see if we can get all those missions done. One second, that's fine. Q. 
Cubone is probably the worst Pokemon we'd want to see in the active spot. <laughs> I have edited it to the point where we do have two Marowak EX we can see. And again, we also have our Pokeball, so at the very least, we will see another basic here. Garfetch is good, but I kind of wish I had something like the... I wish I could add something like X-Speed to go ahead and get Cubone out. Yeah, all just okay. Let me go ahead and do this. At the very least, with what our opponent has right now, um, they would have to evolve Nidoran to be able to do any damage to us. I guess Nidoran male specifically. Okay, yep, they will actually be retreating, and this is going to do 30. That is rough. Might actually have to retreat ourselves here. Sand true. I mean, that's pretty okay. I do, I do like seeing that. Marowak EX. Okay. I think we have to play a little aggressive here since we're already kind of committed to Cubone. Do that. Can put Sand true. The best thing is, is that we do have Sandshrew as a backup if we need it. But, this will actually get the KO. And with weakness, that'll be 20 extra damage. Didn't really need that, but not gonna complain. It would be even better if we didn't see Nidoran switch into anything here. Okay, well, Professor's Research is gonna get problem into something, surely. See Nidorino. And Tauros, okay. Another sand slash, okay. Try Marowak EX one more time here. Just need to see one. I see two. So, oh, okay. The, this was, um, Marowak EX is one of the reasons we wanted to specifically run this is because we knew that we could do 100 damage with him and just run through anything. Assuming we got a hit. <laughs> 50 damage here is a little nasty, but there shouldn't be anything too dangerous here. You know what? I'm gonna play it safe. Sabrina here. Retreat. Go into Sand Slash. We are able to attack this turn, and that will get the KO on the Nidoran. I mainly wanted to do this just because we have that mission specifically to not lose any Pokemon. And so, if we're going to prevent that from happening, we need to just go all in on offense. So that way, Pum doesn't have any room to breathe. But, yep, we get both of those done there, so that's another one taken care of in advanced mode. Machamp EX, again, I think is Psychic type specifically, which means we would have to use Mewtwo EX. We don't really have a very competent deck for that right now. This Pikachu EX also wants us to kind of use fighting type Pokemon, and of course will be the easiest to accomplish just with the weakness in mind. But we will still need to see Marowak EX. And first, I don't care 100% for that. Starting off with two Professor's Research on the first turn is extremely good though. I will not complain about that. Do see Marowak, so if we run into some Pokeballs, there's a chance that we could... No. <laughs> I was gonna say there's a chance that we could go ahead and get Cubone on the bench. Uh, no, that is not the case. Yeah, this is the only bad thing. Is that Farfetch'd is going to be weak. Do you see Cubone? I... I think since... I think since we're not worried about, you know, preventing any KOs here, I actually do want to just go ahead and let Farfetch get KO'd here. That would have been really bad if I had switched in. I could use the X speed to save Farfetch, but there's not really a reason for me to. Now yeah, we're going to see this electric come up. in Cubone. Of 
12 into Marowak EX. And again, same as before, we really... We are really just relying on pure luck here to try and sweep through these. But we are getting the heads we're looking for, which is good. So that'll be the 100 damage, I think, for that mission. So really, all, I think at this point, all we have to do is clutch it out. I think if you lose, you actually don't complete the missions. I'm pretty sure you have to win still. But we put our opponent a little bit behind here. Yeah, they're actually sending in full orb. Wait. Did I see that right? Electro doesn't have any retreat. I did not know that. Any, look, any Pokemon that doesn't have retreat is like super good in my book. Um, yeah, we can Bone Meringue here. I'm gonna miss both. Yeah, go. It was gonna happen eventually. Thankfully, after that, we will be able to have Sand Slash as an option. It looks like most of their Pokemon don't have more than 100 HP. So I'm actually going to do this. X Speed. Going to retreat. Put in Sand Slash. Gonna Sabrina, see what they send up. Okay, Blitz will make sense here. And nothing they should have should threaten us with a KO here. I don't think, even if we saw Pikachu EX here, that it would be able to attack in one turn. Yeah. Should be all good. Let's go ahead and do that. I'll use a potion. Again, I really don't think that this is meant for any missions, but, you know, there could be, like, total, um... Like, accumulative missions down the line where it's like, use this many trainer cards or attach this many energies, and... I mean, if we ever do see those, we gotta pad them stats. Good victory versus the Pikachu X here, and that's another one down. Thank you! <laughs> Praise to Marowak EX for actually cooperating with us a little bit these past couple episodes that we've been using it. We very much appreciate it. Yeah, this is another one where we just have to kind of get through without getting um, KO'd. Let me see what I can do for this deck. I really think there's only maybe one or two things I can change. Okay, so we have our Psyducks here. We have Golduck. I put in Snom and Frostmoth because at least that is a decent evolution line we have. And the sleep on Frostmoth could get us a couple turns. Bruxus I put in. I got rid of a extra Rattata just because I really did not figure we'd need it. And then I got rid of Red Card and I decided to put in Misty. So Misty is the trainer slash supporter that's really meant for the water decks. We've run into it at least twice before, I think now. Um, and it is a good card, but it's really a good card if you manage to, to hit the heads. So this is this is actually all fine here. I don't love not starting with any supporters. But we could be in a lot worse of a situation here. Again, really, it, it's been such a pain to not have a second gold duck. Because if we did, then I probably would have just foregone using something like a. Uh, the, Rat the Rattata and Raticate. Okay. Hopefully they don't have the evolution for Rapidash. I think if they do, that puts them at a hundred. Unfortunate. Yikers. Resident Research. Okay, we really needed to see you. Whether it's, um... Like Misty or just some other cards here. Okay, Sabrina could be useful. I 
I'm gonna be a little crazy here. I'm gonna go for the Psyduck Headache. So this is going to at least guarantee us a KO next turn. Forcing them to not use supporter cards so they can't just get infinite advantage here. They're actually going in with Charmander. That's really interesting. Okay. I'm okay with sacrificing the Psyduck here. I'm gonna go ahead and put one on Bruxish, that way we can have him at the ready. I'm gonna Sabrina. This is actually exactly what I wanted to see. So, one thing we've kind of forced our opponent here into is one, again, they still can't use support cards. And two, um, they're actually not going to be able to attack with many of their Pokemon here. X speed is good. Yeah, you know what? I am gonna use that X speed. Because if we see Golduck, this will probably be the easiest one to evolve into. So Bruxish is the second strike. We'll definitely get a KO on these guys. Also, just realized that I was completely ignoring that uh, mission that I was talking about earlier, right? The one where you had to, um, what is it, uh, to go without getting KO'd, right? <laughs> I had absolutely ignored it already. I was so prepared to just get rid of a, a Pokemon here. Oh yeah, that was... Thank you very much for that. Rattata's a little annoying again just because it's kind of another big body. We still KO here. We don't KO here. Okay, we really need to see Professor's Research or the Gold Duck. Football is not it. That is not it, Chief. Snom, which we cannot put on a bench. Yeah, we have a lot of Pokemon here in hand that we just can't do much with. Actually, I still don't regret putting the other Psyduck down. But yeah, we're just playing too awful slow here. And I, if I had to guess what they've got trapped with, is they actually had... We get the Articuno EX. So I think that what they did is they probably have had the Charizard EX in hand for a while now, and they just haven't been able to play it because they haven't grown into it. So Yeah, I'm going to use Bruxus here. Yeah, we have five cards left in deck. We definitely should be seeing our Gold Duck here soon. Yep, and that... <laughs> I called it exactly, that's exactly what it was. So, Raticate's gonna get a KO here and we won't be able to complete the mission. It's really unfortunate because if we had just seen one more Pokemon who we could evolve into, like Golduck, we would've been fine. Oh my God, this is really, really bad. Now we're just at the risk of losing the entire thing because we can't draw into the one card we need. Or draw into another draw card that'll get us what we need. Miserable. Okay, this is not useful, really. and Bruxish. Get that KO there, and we do have our final point. Charles are definitely making it difficult, though. Yeah, went 18 turns. I really do think that all we need to see is we need to have another Gold Duck. Um, yeah, the Snom and... Oh, I also had removed Eevee and Vaporeon. I'm sorry, I did forget to mention that. Snom and Frostmoth, I mean, they just, they kind of have the same problem that Eevee and Vaporeon did, and it's not really that the cards themselves are bad, but we're stacking in too many cards that we can't even put on our bench. We've got Farfetch, we've got Rattata, we've got Snom, we've got Psyduck, we've got Articuno EX, we've got Bruxish, I think, I think that's pretty much every, like, basic Pokemon 
that we have in the deck. I'll look that back over. So we have six Pokemon that we're trying to fit on our bench that can only fit like three. And then of course we have our Pokemon in the active spot. So I think if I were to continue, definitely would get rid of Rattata and Raticate, but we really just don't have any of the Pokemon right now to to really just to take advantage of that. Because we'd want, ideally we'd want another Articuno EX and then we'd want a Golduck. Guess what? It is the end of our next week since we are on the 24, okay, I was going to say we we're on 21st of our thing. Oh, we got an achievement. Do we get anything from that? Oh, we get uh, rewards from it after that. No, wait, it did say. Oh, my, I have a little lens thing in the top right that kind of covers up some of my stuff, so it does actually give you rewards for that. Okay, cool. Fine enough. That's pretty okay. Do any of these really... Is that all freaking shine dust? Really? No rewards? I mean, nah, that's fair. But alrighty. I think the, that gives me reason to go into my kind of thoughts on the game and current criticisms. So just, you know, playing as is overall assessment, I'm still enjoying the game. Being able to open up two packs every day feels like I am at least getting enough value per week and that I'm seeing enough cool stuff that I want to keep playing. Um, again, I think the one big issue is that they just don't have a proper battle mode yet to kind of incentivize you to play the game after you do your dailies. And that leads me into my next point. So again, there are a lot of plans for the game that we probably have not seen yet. And I think per update and day by day, we're actually seeing more and more that, you know, we're not supposed to see. And I don't want to, you know, go over any of that there. But one of the things that I really think that they should have, and I don't know, this might be incorporated into the premium pass, is we really should see weekly missions. So weekly missions is just another way to keep people like coming back. So that way, you know, besides their daily stuff, they have an incentive to play the game longer than just log in for five minutes, log out. The, these rewards shouldn't be anything that's like actual fear of missing out. It should just be extra hourglasses, maybe a timer. I would put shine dust there, but again, that seems a resource that's pretty easy to come by. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think you want to lock cards or promos behind weekly missions. I think the most you can do is just give people more opportunities to get hourglasses for packs, hourglasses for picks, and the store rewards, like the store tokens. Just because, really, again, if I were, like, playing personally, I would probably just stop after getting my missions done for the day. And that seems harsh because that sounds like I don't like the battles, and that's not the case at all. Again, because I'm used to the Pokemon TCG, I like making a deck that I know is very competent, I have pretty much full control over, and I'm able to pilot confidently. I have really only two decks right now that I seem to do that with. The Toxic deck actually performed better than I expected, and the same is with the Grass one. We're still missing a whole lot of pieces for both, don't get me wrong, but I still think that we are doing well enough with those decks, even if we don't have, you know, these huge cards like Venusaur EX. I went on my tangent again there, but really, weekly missions, I think, are just something that needs to be incorporated into the cycle of Pokemon's ECG Pocket. There needs to be a reason for people to kind of come back and, and enjoy more of the game than just be like, oh, this is just a passing pack that I'm opening. Because I think at that point, people are definitely going to get fatigue after about a month because that's all they're doing. You know, and like I mentioned before with the battles, um, if you don't have any kind of rewards for the online battling and you've done everything you can for the AI battles, there's not a real reason left for you to continue playing battle mode unless you just really enjoy battling that's about it i have one more complaint and i feel like i've definitely touched on it at least once or twice i did not even intend to go this way but quite literally touching on cards still seems to be a little finicky like when you're trying to read a card and you hold down on it and it doesn't always pop up it is just really weird i'm not sure i don't think it's something with my phone in particular because i haven't noticed any touch problems um, but yeah, I'll just hold down on a card for more than a second and it'll kind of do the little hop, but then it won't do anything after the fact. And I think that you need either another toggle that'll make it easier for you to do that. So like just double tapping on a card and then, you know, you'll be able to see it or just making the long press more reliable. There's a whole lot of familiarity that will just inevitably come with playing the game. 
but knowing what your opponent's cards do is part of the game and is a very essential part of winning. If there is something that causes frustration or annoyance, whatever the case is, you don't want that. Like that, that is something that you can avoid and something that you just be able to kind of fix in post. Uh, hopefully again, that'll just be something they have done before the game officially releases. So that way, don't have to worry about it at all. This is the equivalent to like something is just like a wrinkle you need to iron out. This is gonna ruin the game or make it unplayable, but I do think that it is annoying, so. Uh, but those are really my two complaints for now. Um, there are still a couple things with the previous ones that I feel like I will address at the end of our full four week, just so that we kind of have a full review. And of course, I'll have more of my like overall thoughts on my gameplay experiences with the game on like, I don't know if it'll be the final day or if I just want to do a video after the fact. I'll get that figured out. But in any case, I will not ramble any longer. Thank you so very much for watching. Hopefully you're having a fantastic night or day, wherever you may be, and I hope to see you next time. See ya!